Okay, are you ready for three libraries, some mysteries, five books, a recommendation for a film and two rants? For free, added in, no extra cost. So on Saturday I had a very bookish day. I returned my university library books. Normally they are behind me there. And if you look back in any of my old videos, you will see them sitting there piteously asking to be taken back again. And having come to the end of my master's, uh, that is what I did on Saturday. This is parting is such sweet sorrow with books, uh, though I don't think they would be maybe of interest to many other people because of their titles. And this is where the, this is where the film recommendation comes in. This Stranger Than Fiction. It's starring Emma Thompson and also Will Farrell in an unusually straight role and Dustin Hoffman also makes an appearance as a literature professor. I came across it by accident when I was watching Emma Thompson being interviewed and asked which of her films was a little bit more obscure people would not have seen. She recommended Strange and Fiction. I made a note and I actually ended up looking at it in terms of an essay for my course so and enjoying it and finding depth upon depth upon depth in it. I'll do a proper review sometime. But basically it's a story of a very ordinary accountant who suddenly hears his life being narrated and begins to wonder why, what's that about, why is somebody able to say what he does and thinks and the story goes on from there. And when I mentioned that to the librarian I was returning the text to, she saw it and said, oh, great no, great film. And I said, yes, it certainly is. And she then said that she had some tattoos on her arm, which were partly taken from the film that she liked the visual style so much. So I didn't, I, I, I almost asked her, could I please see it? And could I take a quick photograph? Um, but then I thought that would just be weird. And but I love the story. I love the fact that something that was an idea that started as a script, then became made into a film, f became a tattoo on somebody's skin, somebody who wore it. And that's partly what my degree was about. It was between the arts, the arts and between the arts intermediality. And just, it was a perfect end to my course to hand in the books and find someone who had made that transition, taken something from one mode to another. The next thing was that when you have an empty book bag, obviously, the next step must be to fill it again. So I popped along to Edinburgh Central Library, which is rather wonderful. I've already visited it and showed some pictures before of its art library section and also its reference section. And this was me going along just to the ordinary borrowing section. But I was specifically a woman with a mission. I was a mission to look for spies. And that's because in Booktube there is a reading event running through November called Dr. November and it's to do with reading books about spies. So I had visited a chat with its hosts, a live chat, and I came in late to the, the whole chat and scrolled back through the comments to see what had been talked about and what hadn't been. And something that I noticed seemed to be missing from the conversation were books by women or books about women spies. So I asked that question. Were there any they would like to recommend? So the hosts were a bit baffled, but I got some names from people who were in the comment section and noted them down, had a look to see what the library might have, should have in Central Library and went looking for them. And that is where the mystery began. First of all, and this is number one rant, First of all, the, I had a shelf number for the book and I had worked in an academic library for about nine years. So I knew I was very familiar with the system of the shelving and it's the Library of Congress. So we have a couple of letters and then some numbers and was having trouble finding the book. So a member of staff came to help me and she then said it should be here and took away some of the letters at the start of the reference because those were just, you know, ones to do with the library. And then took the shelf number itself, went to look, couldn't find it, and they said, oh, maybe it's in the biography section. And just to say, <laughs> the book I was looking for was about Chanel sleeping with the enemy, her part of the Second World War. And so off we went to the biography section, right across the whole of the room. And 
but the member herself was brilliant with me. She was so, so patient. And then she came back. She decided that she thought that the Chanel book was maybe getting a new book jacket. And she went off to check. And how, how amazing is that? I mean, Chanel, famous all her life for making jackets, possibly off being mended to get a new book jacket. It's really strange. Anyway, didn't deter me from filming books on a shelf. What's not to like about books on a shelf? And as I was filming, you will hear at the end what she says. She just came upon me while I was filming and you'll hear her comment. Hi, I'm sorry, I'm afraid our copy of that seems to have disappeared. And what she was saying was she couldn't find Chanel. Chanel and the war had gone. And there were several other books she tried to help me with that were to do with spies and we couldn't find them. It was just like as if even the books themselves were mysterious and just missing or she couldn't put her hand on them and yet they should be there and then there was one that was going off to be mended so she requested one from another branch or it just went on it was amazing just totally amazing but my rant is about the way the shelf the library was shelved and I spoke to you the staff were fantastic they could not have been more helpful the lady who was helping me said she had to keep going back to be at the issuing desk and I totally get that because the one of the people before me was a blind lady with a, with a white stick and she was getting all audiobooks and so she, obviously she needed someone to help her issue the books um, so I could clearly see that was important but this lady who was doing the working in the library kept going back and forward if there wasn't anybody there uh, to help me which was just so kind and then I got speaking to a colleague of hers who came free and wasn't on the issue desk she was great as well but when I asked her about why do you start why don't you just run from A to Z um, in the in your shelf listings? She said, well, other branches do this for biography. They, they have them like this and people are used to them. And <laughs> deeply frustrating. Anyway, I defied the system and I got a book which I am reading. I discovered that biographies are, guess what, incredibly thick as anybody could tell you, really, really deep. So this is the one I decided to read first. It's about Anthony Blunt, and it's titled as Anthony Blunt, His Lives, because he not only was a secret spy, but he also was huge in the art world. And that's part of the reason why I loved this book. It ticked boxes for me. It was to do with art history and how it became taught and specialised in. And I thought this would be interesting. I also opened the book at random, which is a great way of finding if a book is actually going to be of interest. Uh, it's very unscientific, but it can be quite a good <laughs> quite a good indicator. And I find out he had mentioned Auden and McNeese. And then as I'd begun reading, I've discovered to my joy that those two poets that I really, really like amongst two of my favourites. McNeese actually shared a study with him for the last year at his boarding school, so they knew each other really well. Now, I've only got this for about halfway through, and part of me is almost regretting starting with him as a spy, but anyway, it's it fix, ticks the book box for non-fiction as well, which has also been read in November, of course, and one of a couple of the prompts are fraud and there's another one I can't quite remember at the moment which is also this would tick the box for if you wanted to do it but I think the lesson I've gone away with is you need to if it is a book that is 500 pages that's 500 pages plus um, extra references at the back you need to really love the person be really utterly fascinated by them he lived in fascinating times uh, there's no two ways about it and that obviously affected why he turned to do spying but um, I'll hopefully finish this book soon and do a full proper review of it. Let me show you the other books I got. So I've got a Russian spy, a lady spy, um, a very dangerous woman, the lives, loves and lies of Russia's most seductive spy and you probably haven't heard of her, I haven't myself but she started around the time of the Russian Revolution, so she's sort of 1917 onwards. And she's Baroness Mura Budberg. Her life is under 350 pages, which see everything now starts to seem short <laughs> compared to Anthony Blood. And of course, 
Women Spies, I was delighted to pick up Mara Hari on the display they, that the library had for the Remembrance Day in November, which tends to remember the, the Armistice Day, both for World War One, World War Two, And this book actually questions whether she, she was a spy, um, the whole idea of this. And it cost her her life. I'll be interested to hear how the trial went, what the evidence was. The book makes a point that she had to pay the cost of her trial. It was going to be taken out of her, her estate, even though she, her life was also going to be forfeit as well. She's 375 pages, so I'll see what that slams. This is a book I've wanted to read for quite a while. It's not about a woman spy, but it's about a woman war correspondent. And I just saw the film, I think it was made based on this book, In Extremis, Mary Colvin. Famous, of course, for being wounded and, and having an eye patch, but also famous for her daring do, her utter drive to get to the truth of what was going on, to say the, to give, let the victims give evidence, especially those who were left behind, to find the bodies. Um, 375 pages again seems to be the kind of rough length and the book was utter the, the film rather was utterly gripping it also showed how she went to PTSD and she would have flashbacks all the time suddenly and distractedly and it's a phenomenal film I would totally recommend watching it unless for you you think it would be a trigger um, and finally Robert Kennedy politician and Robert Kennedy and His Times by Arthur M. Schlesinger and this is not slim but it's covering an immense period of time obviously the Cold War famously with the Cuban Missile Crisis of his brother <laughs> the number of pages in the book now this is counting the index admittedly 1066 that's a very memorable number uh, so it's a big brick of a book but I'm it's been recommended and by Steve Donoghue who said that there's a lot actually in it about his brother. So obviously the two brothers work closely together as President and Attorney General to the top positions in the country. And this book I think is interesting reading as background to a lot of the spy stories and this whole idea of the Cold War. What I'm learning about is how many lives you learn about in reading about one person. If it's somebody in a particular job or area, they can give a very good idea of their times, their seasons, the the country they're in, the state of the world, the politics, what are they reacting to, and the people around them. And I think that in reading this book about Robert Kennedy, I'm going to get a sense of the times he was in and the different pressures on the politics and the country itself. So... As to whether or not I'll get around to finishing many books about spies, I don't particularly know. I think I am pretty much overburdened with books for the near, the immediate future, but we'll see how that goes. As to which women wrote about the whole Cold War and the spying, the fiction, I've got a trail of names to follow and I'll put some on the screen so you can see them. Also, I'm particularly interested in a book, Above Suspicion, which was the first book of a, a writer who came from Scotland and went to America. And she was travelling around the time that Hitler was coming to power and she began to see what was going to happen. And she was travelling with her husband who was actually working for MI6 and they came back to New York and she began making notes for from their honeymoon of situations, countries they'd passed through in Europe and they continued to keep visiting in Europe and she kept making her notes and eventually it, they, had a, they had a son and the son was seriously ill going to hospital and for some reason her husband came across her notes and just said, I'm, said that, you know, I think, Helen, I think you're ready to write a story and so she did. So that was the start of I think it was four decades um, of writing books. She wrote so many 
four of them, three or four of them became films and her first one was Above Suspicion, written on that. And the way she wrote it, because we are in non, not only non-fiction November, not only Doctor November, where we're reading about spies, but we're also in NaNoWriMo, which is about writing, or writing your first draft of a novel. And a little writing comment that came from looking at this writer was that she sat down with all these notes she'd made and her husband gave her a clipboard and a couple of pencils, paper, and off she started and she said, I'm going to tell myself a story. I think that's astonishing. And from that she built this lifelong career writing spy novels. She was over 20 in her lifetime. So these are the books. This is my challenge. Will I make the challenge? It could well end up running into December, I imagine, but there's certainly it's a whole set of books I wouldn't have looked at except for Dr. November. I don't tend to think about war, reading books on war or politics or spies. The the war correspondent one was something at the back of my mind and it's now at the forefront and I'm looking forward to reading about her. Uh, as a very, very interesting individual. It's also taken me down the path of a lot more biography than I would normally read. So I hope you've enjoyed these books. It's sparking something for you. And I'll just finish with my other rant, which is simply that I took these books across the road to the National Library of Scotland because there was a cafe there and my husband was already there waiting for me. He knew better than to stand over me while I'm going through books just extremely tedious and he was having a coffee and I popped over went to get myself something and I had an accident there because I think the design is really really poor if not dangerous so I'll put a photograph up and basically I went and got a tray with soup on it and a black Americano and I paid at the till facing the till and then I turned round because my husband was and the eating area was back behind me turned round and Suddenly, I was like a walk into brick wall, and I had they have a pillar, so you do all the paying and your tensions on that. You pick up your tray, you turn right, and the pillar is right there, bang me in the shoulder. The hot liquid spilt over my hand. My hands got a little bit burnt, but I ran under tap for a while, and it was fine a day later. But I just want to have a little rant about that to say that when anyone is making a cafe have a clear area when someone is turning around from having paid. I think it's... I don't understand why the, the pillar, why it was arranged to have the pillar there. I would have made it that the pillar was part of the counter. So nobody at any point is going to try and walk through it because it's part of this built-in counter. But anyway, that's a cautionary note if you're going to eat there. Be very, very careful when you're... Um, moving away from the top. So that's my bookish weekend. As you can probably guess, I spent a lot of it starting in to reading about my first spy book, my first spy uh, biography. I think I'll still be reading it in quite a while to come. Bye for now.